weird phase right now and the market's restructuring is what I say. Uh, like the amount of sell-off we had from 69,000 to what was that 32.9k there was not much hodlers selling I tell you there was just risk off sell down from futures exchanges and that those traders led the price they were dumping their futures their quarterly futures and and eventually the the the, the hodlers started selling down um, like so ever so slightly and it was quite different from what happened in May you could kind of predict it right you could see the hodlers were starting to dump and those hodlers were a lot of those guys that were buying in, you know, new hedge funds, institutional money, family offices, they were buying in from that breakout from 20,000 all the way up to 50, 50 to 60,000. Like, there was a huge amount of buying that was underlying the, um, you know, spot buying, taking those coins off the exchanges, putting into cold storage for long term investment. And um, it seems like a lot of those guys sold off and dumped in May. You could see that coming, but here, very little people sold. It was a very gradual slide down on on-chain demand, and yet the price was sliding and kept sliding, and it was led by the futures, um, which was different from what we normally see, which is the you know the on-chain demand supply tends to lead um, the price action. Mm. So it's one of these weird times, you know. I'm kind of interested to see what the structure sort of looks like and how the dynamics work between all the different participants now that we've got futures ETFs here. Like the way that the price is behaving right now is so different from where it was, you know, in the first half of last year. Yeah, it's, it's changed so many times though, you know. But this is like, I, I feel like it's like, you know, coming out of the 30,000 bottom that was like sort of June, July. Um, that rally was quite different um, from others. And I think that was a transition where, you know, in that rally upwards, that was when um, the spot, uh, sorry, the futures ETF started to go live. Now this is just as my view on it, just seeing how the price is being impacted by, in relation to what the futures are doing. And I'm just looking at the two different movements and the, the, it's like the weighting's gone towards the futures a lot more now. The only th difference that's, that I can account for in between that time is the ETFs that went live in between that that time, you know, from the last bottom to now. Are those uh, futures ETFs bad, bad then for Bitcoin? Yep, I think so. Um, you do? We don't need them, right? You can buy Bitcoin. Retail can buy Bitcoin on Square Cash App, right? On on mm. Kraken, Gemini, Coinbase, you know, Binance, any 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 exchange you can buy it on. Um, there's no need for an ETF. The only interface into um, you know like the, the argument for ETFs is to it's easy access for the stock traders, right? The, um, you know, and you might say that might be like the older generation, Gen Xs, the boomers that have, you know, they call up their brokers and not, but in reality, I think it's it's a very good instrument. This the futures ETF, um, if you're an institutional trader, because it's it's fully regulated. You can either trade the CME or you can trade the the equities. But if you're going to buy Bitcoin to hold, you'd be an idiot to buy the the, the ETF that's currently structured right? because it's so expensive to hold it. Um, mm. Just the way it's structured, you're paying. Um, what is it like? You might be losing 15% per year by holding that um, because you're buying futures, and futures is effectively um, holding Bitcoin by renting the house rather than buying the house. Could we be in a bear market? Uh, not um, if the pass repeats, right? Every time we've seen long term holders um, holding most of the coins, um, you know. It's, it's structurally set up for it to run upwards. Um, bear markets happen when everyone who's holding the coins are noobs. Um, and when you say like long term versus noobs, it's basically how long have those those coins been um, aged in a wallet. So if you look across all the wallets on the blockchain and and you go, look, it's what's how old are these coins before they move? How long have they been sitting in these wallets? You know, it goes through cycles and these tight cycles where most of the coins have been sitting there for more than five months. Um, it's a very strong setup, which is what we've got now. It's at peak levels of um, these coins. The coins across um, all of the, the network have been sitting there, most of them, for more than um, five months. 
people who do that, they've held on for five months. They're not selling. They're mm. not selling at a loss. They will sell when there's profit be had. And you'll see that whenever it breaks out of like all time highs and does a really strong rally, those guys that have been holding for five months start to take the money and they, they take cash um, that's available. You know, they cash out, they take the profit. And eventually, um, new guys that are coming in to buy the, um, buy the rally, they're the new guys. And, you know, they want to get rich too. They're the bag holders. And they're the, well, you know, they're the bag holders. But what they what typically happens is um, it's very vulnerable to a, a bear market because some of them sell, right? They sell. Mm. Um, like the 2018 bear was at peak new guys holding the coins. Oh, you, yeah. So it's just like old hands um, are out, new hands become old hands, and it's, it's back and forth. And we're in the old hand situation. We went rallying from 30,000 to um, 69 and we did see a little bit of sell down from those five month old old holders and they took some profit and slid down they you know lo and behold around about 40,000 um, low 40s they just stopped selling um, we, they've stopped selling for actually a number of weeks now and actually they're, they're now like you could say they're accumulating or in other words some of the new guys have sort of aged to the five month zone and they're becoming old hands. So those guys, um, as an equilibrium, that cohort is now gaining. And so it's actually strengthening again. So it's not a, um, you know, structurally on chain, it's not a bear market setup, even though I would say we're at peak fear, like no doubt about it, people are really scared, um, which typically is, a time to like it's an opportunity to buy um, and like you don't often get this kind of pullback you know it's not you don't sort of slide 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 it and then and then capitulate um, with you know we've come, we've come down from um, 60 69 to 33 and you know, it'd be hard pressed to capitulate from 33 down to say 20 because that's like um, retracing something like a 2018 bear market over two, two, two and a half months instead of a year. Right? Anyway, like structurally it's very, very strong and demand started to come back in. Um, the hodlers that were slightly being um, dis dispirited by the, the futures traders selling down have, have um, stopped selling. They're rebounding now and there's accumulation coming. The whales are now, um, and when I say whales, these are guys with more than 1,000 Bitcoins. So, so I term a lot of those guys as potentially institutional investors. They're, they're starting to um, flick over to buying, right? They, they, they peaked their selling in December. So you could say institutions were selling down in December, which is kind of a part of their normal cycle. They sell down, they redeploy in January. Looks like that started. Um, the whales are coming in. Um, the futures, um, you know, coming off the CME and ETF and you know all the other um, futures exchanges. But I primarily think that the CME <coughs> and the futures ETF drives a lot of this now. Demand started to come in. It started to come in a few days ago. Mm. So um, yeah, like most of this week, demand started to come in, and for weeks on end. It was just toxic. It was just no demand. It was like um, divestment, divestment, divestment. Um, so.